Hi, everybody. Uh, day six of 24 hardcore centered conversations. And I went from like this morning going, oh, what am I gonna talk about? To now like having notes because I can't keep track of my thoughts. Okay, so this has been coming up for me all day and I've processed a lot of it. So I have some insight to share, okay? But what kept coming up for me today is this concept of live in the now, the power of now, be present. Um, I've been trying to meditate a lot more and I find that all of these meditations remind you to stay present, stay in the moment. And it really got me thinking why that's so hard. And the reason it's so hard is because as human beings, we are designed to have the ability to think past and future. And so I started questioning. If I'm meant to live in the now, then why am I designed to have the ability to see the past, remember the past, hold on to emotions of the past, as well as think about the future and worry about the future? And so when I kind of broke it down and dissected it, um, it was interesting because to me, the past was something that already happened. It no longer exists, right? It's gone. And so you're like, okay, energetically, why does the past stay so present? Why does the past live so deeply in the present? If it's already happened and it's gone, why are we so attached to it? And so some of the thoughts I had was, well, maybe it's because this is a way of us remembering loved ones when they pass away. But then the flip side to that would be, yeah, but it also allows us to hang on to bad memories. And it also allows us to remember things that we wish we could forget. And so I was like, okay, so what's the point of being able to tap into the past? And it's much the same for the future. I think about the future and what could be. And so there's a potential for something being really wonderful. And then there's potential for something not so wonderful. So we're it, sometimes we fear the future because it's like, well, looking at some of the world and the way it is now, I fear the future or I dream about a great future. Um, but if I can't access it now, then why does it live in the present moment? Why is it here if it doesn't have a purpose in the now? And why can't I stay present in the now? Why do I have the ability to vacillate between past and future? And so what I began to think of is the past is accessible to us because it gives us the lessons that we need. And the future is accessible to us because it's an opportunity to apply those lessons. And the now moment is when we fuse the two together. It's when we take the lessons that we learned from the memories we have and we integrate it into the present moment and build in this present moment the future we want to have. And so what that began to look like is the past was repair right? Because not everything, if everything in the past was perfect, your present moment would therefore lead you to perfection. But it isn't. We all have things we need to work on. We all have areas that aren't working for us. So the past, we have access to the past as a way to repair, which is why it exists in the now, which is how we use it to anchor into the now. And then the future is to prepare, so when we use the repairs to prepare, then the past and the future now are spinning in present time, right? They now have a purpose and a use for us right now in this moment. So it's like this, it gave me this freedom to not hold on to the tightness of the past or regret, because that's what we often do. The past comes with regret and the future comes with doubt. And the way for me to mutate all that energy, the way for me to really live in the present moment, at least for me, who overthinks everything, is to say, okay, the way I'm going to live in the now is knowing that the memories I have are simply tools for me to repair what isn't working so that I can prepare to create for myself the future that I want to have. And in this lovely uh, world that we live in, as I was beginning to like unlock this beautiful 
concept, um, I came across an article from Dr. Dr. Joe Dispenza. And if you don't know who he is, he's an amazing guy. He's all over YouTube. I will link the article in the comments, but if you don't know who he is, or if you do know who he is, you should read this article. It's quite amazing. And it's, this is part two. It's called prayer changes everything. And he interchangeably uses the word intention for the word prayer. So whatever you are called to use, whatever word is your magic wand, I urge you to use that word. And I agree with him. They're interchangeable, right? It's that putting into the universe, putting up to God or whatever it is you believe in, that intention, that request that you want to have answered. And so he says some really cool things. Um, and I had two conversations with two separate people today on this topic. And so I felt like maybe this is what my message should be. It says, you need to stay present in the state of being without anticipating your future, which is uncons unconsciously based on the memories of your past, which is makes perfect sense, right? We're constantly basing our future outcome on what's already happened in the past. And the key is that it's all able to be manipulated and rearranged right here in this present moment. So we're not locked into anything. It says prayers will be answered. Um, when you do this on some level, you are surrendering the when, the where, and the how your prayers will be answered. And since you're no longer trying to predict or force outcomes and solutions, this means you've moved into a state of trust. So how do you maintain a healthy balance between prayer, intention, surrender, and trust? That is the quintessential question, right? How do you do it? How do you play that game? Your intention is like dropping a stone in a pond. The ripple or wave it creates is the signal. And the thing is, we never know how big that pond is. That's the unknown. So sometimes it takes longer than others for that signal to reach the shoreline and bounce back to us. However, because we know the wave is the universe's law for the transference of energy, we know that at some point the signal will find its way back to you as long as you're in a vibrational match with the energy of the emotion from which you created the prayer. So you're going to get whatever you put out and you have to know that, right? Like the wave is gonna come back, that's a universal law. And so when you create that prayer, when you set out that intention, there's the, an emotion attached to it, which is a vibration. And it's going to call back to you vibrations that match itself. So it's really important to understand that, right? And that's why sometimes when we live in the hurt of the past, when we live in regret from the past, or scarcity or whatever your limiting mindset and beliefs are from the past, when you pray or set an intention or put out a message and you've got that those feelings from the past within you, it doesn't matter what the message is because the feelings are the vibration behind the message. And so more of those feelings are gonna come back to you. But if you know that you don't want your future to look the same as your past, if you know there's some things I wanna work on, I wanna make sure that my future memories, when I look back on them, they are better than the memories I look back on now. I wanna keep making every memory better and better. And so the way to do that is to take the lessons, but unlock the energy that you've attached to it, to take the lessons. Okay, I learned that money had to be really hard and you had to work really hard to earn it and that you either were born with it or you're screwed, right? That's my limiting belief. That's my past. So when I pray for money in the present, if I pray for it and ask, I, I want abundance, I want lots and lots of money, and I'm using this example because that's actually the work I'm trying to do, the thing is, the energy behind it, the thought and belief and feeling behind it is that I'm not really worthy of being rich. I wasn't born with it. I'm not smart enough to get it. You know, all of these stacked memories from the past. And if I set an intention with the stacking of that energy, then there's probably not a chance. But now I say, okay, I had a lack mindset. I grew up, money was tough. We, were, we didn't have a lot of it. But I wanna change that. I wanna look back on 
this year and think of how abundant it was and how I was able to easily make cash. And so now when I ask for it, I'm going to bring in a different energy behind it. Now, I, I, I've seen this work in so many areas of my life. Money has been a harder block for me, but this is like speaking to me because I've always worried about the future and took the mistakes of the past into my present moment. And I'm really trying to learn to pivot that. Um, so the last thing I want to read to you is um, this beautiful sentence. He said, the second part of surrender is the transcendental moment when we let go and get out of the way. And that's what my friend and I talked about today is how do you get out of your own way? Because usually the problem is yourself. I'm my own problem. The, my biggest block to greatness is me. And so how do I do that? How do I get out of my own way? And it says to get out of the way is to get beyond yourself. And this is an act of trust. To trust at this level is to say, I don't know how this is gonna happen, or I have given everything I have and now I'm just gonna let go. And it's this letting go process that makes room for something greater to occur. And I think for me, that's what it is. It's trust that if I give it my all and I believe in it and I use my lessons uh, and I repair the past and I prepare for the future, that I can trust that the universe is gonna care for me, that God is gonna care for me, that whatever intelligence or greater thing than yourself that you believe in is gonna catch you. And it's by being greater it's by believing in something greater than yourself. It's by knowing that you're in your own way. And the uh, image I had last night as I was falling asleep, and I don't know if this is gonna make sense, but it's been on my mind, so I'm gonna share it, right? That's like the point of my lives. Is if you were to be blindfolded, um, and, well, I guess, a blindfold wouldn't really matter, but if you were to free fall off a cliff going forward, so imagine your arms are open and you're falling forward, you're, you have to fall forward. If you're falling forward back with your eyes towards what you're falling towards, with your eyes in the direction of what you're falling towards, you're not gonna be able to trust because you know what's there. You're like, oh crap, I'm. this is high up and that's water and all of a sudden you start really assessing your situation and you're in your head, you're in your mind. There's no room for trust because you see what's coming. You don't have the option of being open to possibility because you don't think there is any possibility. It's like me and the water, that's what there is. But if you were to do it backwards and if you were to not see and fall with your eyes in the opposite direction, so what you're going towards is behind you, you would have to trust because you wouldn't know what you're falling into. And it wouldn't be any less scary, but it would force you into trust. It would force you into saying, I don't know what I'm falling into, but here I go. Because you don't know. You're limited to, you can't be boxed into thinking that there's only one outcome. Because there could be many, you have no idea. It could be concrete, it could be water could be air, could be clouds, you just, you don't have any idea. So you're more open to the possibility. And so sometimes it's like that free fall where you, it's, don't worry about what's down there, jump. I hope that makes sense. Um, if it doesn't, tell me it doesn't. And tell me you want to know more. And tell me not a word made any sense to you. Or tell me all my words made sense to you. Or give me a heart, or give me a like, or give me... They don't have thumbs down, they only have thumbs up. We should request that Facebook does a thumb down, maybe. I know that's not nice, but what if that's what you feel? Um, hopefully though, you do something. Interact with this video somehow. Show me that you watch, show me that you're here, and let me know. Uh, and I will see you tomorrow on day seven. I love you all. Have a wonderful, wonderful evening. Tomorrow's Thursday, and I call Thursday Friday Eve, so I'm so excited about that. All right, I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Have a great evening, everybody. Bye-bye.